Today on Beers TV Investigates, does the gyre really gyre, and would you like one for free? Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of Beerus TV Investigates, a weekly YouTube series which explores popular reefing theories, products, methods, what the manuals are missing with the focus on putting them to the test. Today, we're testing three different elements. Does the MaxSpec gyre really create a gyre in the tank, meaning an aquascape reef tank, not just a glass box? Followed with, can you create gyres with other types of pumps you already own? And lastly, which option was best for the six foot BRS 160? A gyre is basically a circulating current and one of the available types of flow patterns reef tank owners can consider as they search for what's best for their tanks. It's become pretty popular because once you see it in action, the strong indirect flow pattern is pretty attractive, particularly when you create alternating gyre patterns in the tank. Strong varied flow is a pretty important component of every reef tank, particularly SBS tanks. There are a ton of benefits associated with flow, but one of the largest is getting nutrients past the boundary layer of water surrounding the coral's tissue. Dana Riddle did an awesome presentation on the effects of light, flow, and water motion at the 2016 MACNA, something we recorded and you can check out on our site in the BRS TV link if you like. More or less, in low flow, the boundary layer of stagnant water surrounding the coral is very thick, preventing the coral from respirating, uptaking nutrients, and ridding itself of the byproducts of photosynthesis. In high flow, that boundary layer is very thin, and in his test, he saw as much as 30% increases in the rate of photosynthesis. End of the day, I think almost every long-term reefer will agree that growth rates and general coral health are closely tied to the amount of flow in the tank. In that spirit, the MaxSpec gyre is significantly different than other powerheads, designed specifically to create these increasingly popular gyre patterns achieved with two longer turbines with an intake on the bottom and a very flat laminar flow output on the top, meaning you can feel the water is emitted in a thin sheet of flow rather than a cone. Benefit is, it's specifically good at shooting water across the top of the tank where it hits the opposing side, travels down the glass, and returns across the bottom to create a gyre. Many of us have seen plenty of demonstrations of the MaxSpec gyre producing that circulating current or flow pattern in an empty tank, but we get asked all the time if it will really behave that way in an actual tank with an aquascape and large corals, which is a solid question because large structures are certain to block flow and change flow patterns. To test that, we use the coral insert Living Coral Aquariums provided us and some small, tiny fluorescent beads to provide us with a visual indication of what the flow pattern really looks like. I think it'll be pretty obvious if there's a real gyre happening in the tank. This is an example of an XF250 gyre, which is rated at 5,300 gallons an hour and running at 100%. I think we'll all agree here there's a very clear gyre happening in the tank with water transversing the top of the tank and returning back across the bottom in a very clear circular pattern. Well, it isn't the exact same pattern as an empty tank. There is a very clear gyre happening here, particularly in the top and bottom portions of the tank. Taking a closer look at the flow in the center of the tank where many of the corals reside, I would say the flow is lower velocity but fairly turbulent with maybe 80% of the beads flowing around randomly and 20% following the gyre pattern back to the pump. Note that all these dynamics can change with pump placement and redirecting the output. One other thing to note, because the gyre's water intake is on the bottom, you can place it really close to the surface without concerns about it sucking in air vortexes and sending micro bubbles everywhere. Placing the pump close to the top not only creates a better gyre, but also hides the pump and makes it less of an eyesore. All in all, the answer to today's first question is a clear 10 out of 10 and a reef certainty. The gyre is absolutely capable of creating a gyre in the tank with an aquascape or obstruction in the tank. I will note the MaxSpec gyre has a reverse function where the turbines spin backwards. They call it a reverse gyre, but looking at the flow pattern, most of the water is emitted at the bottom, and while it does create varied flow, it does not create anything even resembling a gyre and much, much lower flow, so I just know that going into it. So what if you want to create a gyre, but you don't want to buy brand new pumps? Can your existing pumps achieve the exact same effect? To that point, we tested three popular pumps with the Ecotec Vortec MP40 Quiet Drive, Tune Streams, and a couple of Corellia Gen 3s. I can tell you right now that anything with fairly direct flow patterns is capable of creating a gyre in the tank, but wide flow pumps will struggle. 
End of the day, all you need to create a gyre is a high velocity, very directional flow. You can shoot across the top of the tank. The water has to return to the pump, and the water will locate the path of least resistance to do that, which is across the bottom of the tank. Taking a look at the Vortec MP40, placed fairly close to the top, you can see the flow is fast, direct, and there's a pretty significant circular gyre created in the tank. Without these beads to see it, I'm pretty sure it would be almost indistinguishable from Max Specs gyre. There are some significant differences here worth noting. The round shape of the Vortec is shooting the water out in a fairly narrow cone of water, which most of you don't want blasting directly on a coral, which it will likely do if you place it in the dead center and near the top, but not low enough to suck in air vortexes. However, a gyre is a gyre and it doesn't have to go top to bottom. You can certainly move the pump forward to the front of the tank and it can just as easily have the water transverse the front of the tank and return on the back in a different type of gyre. That might not be possible if the rock is stacked across the back of the tank, but if the aquascape is more island themed with a space behind it, it's certainly an option. I will say in general, if a top to bottom gyre is your goal, it can be done with a Vortec, but the biggest challenge will be not sucking in air and the related micro bubbles because the Vortec draws water from the entire circumference of the pump, and it's more difficult to place it as close to the surface without drawing air in. Overall, the Vortec is an incredibly versatile pump capable of really high flow and a tremendous amount of different flow patterns and functions, including a gyre with a few caveats. Similar to that, we were able to create a solid gyre with the Tune 6085. The gyre's flow is obviously considerably slower because the pump is only 2,100 gallons an hour and not 5,500 like the Max Spec or 4,500 like the Vortec MP40, but there's an obvious circular pattern of flow. To be fair, we decided to throw two Tune Streams pumps in the tank and spread them apart, which is about 4,200 gallons an hour, which brought the flow and gyre effect into the same realm as the other pumps we looked at today, but with a few notable differences. First, while well, the other pumps we tested hit the left side of the tank at pretty high velocity, the speed at which the water rises up on the right side is significantly slower. With the two tunes pumps, the effect is similar, but significantly more even from left to right. I think this might be because the flow is spread out a bit wider across the top of the tank. The gyre effect seems to be more uniform with two separate pumps. We were able to put the larger tune streams pretty close to the surface without running into air vortexes, likely because of where tunes places the props inside the larger ball. Being able to put the pumps close to the surface is pretty key for a top to bottom returning gyre. And while some of you might obviously not want two pumps on each side, we notice a really interesting opportunity. You can split the pumps up, so one is providing a gyre behind the rockwork and the other in the front of the tank, but neither is directly blasting the corals, which are often in the center of the tank. The ability to direct and shape the gyre around your actual aquascape and corals using pump placement, aiming the pumps, and speed variances is going to be attractive to a lot of reefers. The ability to adjust a gyre means if you have corals and rocks stacked on the back of the tank, you can factor this in just by placing a larger pump in the front of the tank where there's open water and a lower flow option in the back creating gyre zones. More or less, I think this is one of the reasons that the max spec gyre works great as well. By splitting the flow up into two separate turbines or pumps, they spread the flow out across the tank rather than being emitted from a single location or beam. Only downside is you can't spin them independently at different speeds and there are limited aiming options. I have to say, well, I certainly don't want more pumps in the tank. The qualities of flow with two pumps were pretty desirable. I really wish we could have tested two Vortec MP10s in a similar fashion. However, our rimless reef savvy tank is three quarter inch glass and too thick for MP10s. I think there's a strong likelihood that a lot of reefers might find two MP10s on each side of a tank like this would provide some pretty awesome flow characteristics and precisely controllable zone gyres or even flow patterns with that ultra low profile cordless attractive look that Vortex are known for. Moving on to the last pump of the day, we're going to look at what a pair of Hydor Corellia Gen 3s, which are rated at 2,450 gallons an hour each, you can immediately see there's a pretty sizable difference here because of the pump's flow pattern is much wider, which creates lower velocity water movement, and in this case, doesn't seem to be reaching the other side of the tank because the flow is so dispersed. I should note that the Gen 3s come with various dispersion caps and we're using the cap with the most directional flow. Some of you are probably pretty surprised about the results because even though a pair of these pumps are rated for higher flow than both the MP40 and a pair of Tune 6085s, visually it certainly seems to produce lower flow characteristics in the tank. 
Hard to say how accurate all of those flow ratings are. However, keep in mind that not everyone is looking for super high velocity gyre flow in their tank. If you have a softy or LPS tank where the corals don't tolerate high velocity water flow, a wide angle dispersed approach like this is very likely more desirable. So to answer today's second question, I'm also gonna give this a 10 out of 10. You can absolutely create a gyre flow in the tank using a variety of different pump styles as long as they're high velocity pumps capable of reaching the other side of the tank and not wide angle pumps which are better suited for other desirable flow patterns. Moving on to today's third question, which option performed the best on the six foot BRS-160 with a real aquascape, including an island on the right and a rock formation which is stacked on the back on the left? There's no doubt that it's gonna be a real challenge to get the gyre to pass four feet, hit that large mound of rock on the left, and then still make it the extra two feet. I can demonstrate the various flows a bit with air bubbles, but it's gonna be harder to see on camera without the assistance of the fluorescent beads. We started with a pair of controllables tuned 6095s we already had on the tank, which did create a gyre, but for the most part, the wide angle mouth on the 6095s stopped the flow about four feet into the tank or around the large rock structure and then returned across the bottom. We actually saw basically the same thing with the MaxBec Gyre 250 turned to 100% as well. Really nice flat flow across the top and it does return across the bottom, but the flow made it to about the same place in the tank as the tunes did and most of the water returned there. Keep in mind the gyre doesn't really need to cross the entire tank as long as you plan on putting alternating pumps on the other side of the tank as well. Moving on to the Vortec with a specific aquascape and tank height, I struggled to create a gyre with the MP40 because I couldn't place the pump high enough without sucking in air and the rock on the back of the tank prevented me from creating an alternative style of front to back gyre. Last pump we tested was the two larger AC tuned 6085s which have the more directional flow cylinder on the front. This was 100% the ticket. We're able to transverse the entire tank with these and create a six foot gyre. This was partially because of the high velocity flow pattern the pump has, but more so something else. After playing with these pumps the entire day, it's pretty clear if you want to create a very specific flow pattern in a tank with significant obstructions like large aquascapes, the ability to adjust the placement of multiple sources of flow and aim them directionally is going to produce the best results. In relation to that, the reason we were able to get the gyre to transverse the entire tank was partially because we could put one of the pumps up near the front of the tank where the open water crosses the entire tank with no obstructions. The other one on the other side to support that flow but not aim directly at the corals. End of the day the team here debated the merits of each pump solution in relation to the gyre for the better half of Friday all the way into happier hour and while we all agreed on the merits of each solution we would all select a different one. One kept saying I don't care about gyres, I refuse to have cords in the tank so Vortex always wins. When appreciating the gyre and everyone agreed the MaxBec gyre was a lot more attractive than multiple corded pumps in the tank. The MaxBec mounts the highest, doesn't suck in air in the tank, and awesome in a four foot tank and good in a six foot tank, so it's pretty compelling. However, we all universally agreed if the perfect gyre is what you're after, multiple pumps which allow for independent placement and adjustable direction or aim of the flow is the ideal solution which is gonna provide the best gyre performance in the widest variety of installs and aquascapes. However, many reefers will find that four corded pumps is less than appealing aesthetically and will sacrifice some amount of performance in favor of simply making the tank look clean and sharp. End of story, almost everyone in the conversation agreed if the gyre is the goal, they would go with the max spec because it's going to achieve the goal in most tanks and look a lot cleaner. However, the answer to today's third question today certainly seemed to be two tune streams provided the best gyre in the 160. One particularly notable element in all this was we were able to get some serious flow going in the tank and the sand tended to stay put because even though there was four to 5,000 gallons an hour of flow going on, moving at a really good velocity, it was fairly diffused by the time it reached the bottom of the tank, which reduced the total amount of sand blowing all over. So outside all that, we open today's video with a note on how to get these pumps for free. We're gonna give away all the pumps that we opened and tested today, which is around a couple thousand dollars in pumps. All you need to do is click on the link that just popped up to sign up, or even easier, click on the sales and deals on our site and the free stuff and prizes category to find the sign up to win this week's prizes, which are two MaxBec Gyre 250s, one Ecotech Vortec MP40, two Tune 6085s, and two Hydor Gen 3s 2450s.
It's certainly my hope that enough of you are interested in winning this gear that we open, test, and talk about each week, that we can continue giving it away permanently. It's your engagement that makes that possible. So let us know that that's something that you would like to see by signing up for the raffle and giving us a quick thumbs up. As always, don't forget to subscribe because we release new BRS TV Investigates every Friday and other reefing videos every Wednesday. See you next week with another episode of BRS TV.